Welcome back. The federal government last week approved the commencement of pre-engineering works on the expansion of Nigeria's electricity transmission and distribution network, as well as its generation capacity by global technology powerhouse Siemens Nigeria. The pre-engineering contract forms the initial step in the presidential power initiative outlined by Siemens and the federal government in July 2019. Now, the PPI project aims to upgrade the electricity network to achieve operational capacity of 25,000 megawatts from the current average of around 4,500 megawatts through a series of projects spanning three phases. But joining us now to analyze this project and its implications for businesses and the economy at large is the chairman of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria Power Development Company, Engineer Ibrahim Usman. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the program. Well, let's begin the conversation with you talking us through the history of the Presidential Power Initiative and how Simmons got involved in the project, considering that there was no open bid from the federal government. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on this program. Uh, as you are all aware, or as we are all aware, electricity is uh, key to development. In fact, uh, there is no economy which will develop without having adequate electricity because all developmental initiatives must have power at the, as a foundation. So uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, you people are taking up this uh, seriously. You recall uh, the president of Germany visited Nigeria uh, about a year or a year and a half ago, and I think that was the time that um, this thing came up. Uh, and it is a good initiative by the federal government. However, Whatever one is doing, if the foundation is not right, it will not work out. It's like uh, taking a building. If the, you are making a building and you find that the foundation is shaky, then the building will collapse. It will never, never stand. And this is our fear uh, with the Siemens Nigerian deal. We fear because, as you are aware, TCN had uh, actually initiated um, a 25-year, or is it 20-year program, uh, which was uh, actually uh, prepared by a German firm. Very beautiful uh, transmission and grid rehabilitation, as well as expansion program. One would have expected that um, if Siemens is coming in, there would have been some synergistic approach or meetings between TCN, the Nigerian Electricity, uh, Nigerian Electricity NEC, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, and all other key stakeholders like the discourse and the GENCOS before a decision is taken. Secondly, we mustn't forget that uh, Nigeria has gone very far in terms of even the manufacture and production of key essential uh, equipment like transformers, uh, like cables, like meters, which are all essential for the success of uh, the Nigerian electricity supply industry. But with the program or with the deal signed with Siemens, I'm not sure there had been uh, discussions based on the local content. Because local content is very, very important. President Buhari's uh, uh, program has the idea of creating jobs. And in this electric sector industry, it's not just creating of jobs, but creation of essential jobs and transfer of technology. One would have thought also that uh, the deal will involve uh, uh, the local manufacturers, especially those that are producing transformers, as I said earlier, and all other essential equipment for the industry. Also, it would have been very smooth if there had been earlier discussions with the key stakeholders. But as, as far as we know, I don't think there had been such. Most importantly, most importantly, the Nigerian electricity supply industry is supposed to be overseen 
or guided by a regulator, which is the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Now, in Nigeria, it would appear that that commission is just a toothless bulldog. I say it is toothless bulldog because, again, they were not taken into confidence. I believe maybe the Minister of uh, Power should have been taken, but even the Minister of Power shouldn't impose himself or his ideas on that. But, but, but are you sure, are you sure this is actually the case here? I'm not extremely, I'm not very sure, but what I do know, because I am aware that uh, there had been a lot of uh, complaints, in particular by uh, key stakeholders, even the discourse themselves that are supposed to be assisted, because the basic concept is for the, uh, for, for, for Siemens to assist our discourse in um, making and creating a robust uh, distribution network within their systems. But even them, this cannot be done, for example, if there hadn't been some groundwork done on what do they really require? What are their priorities? What are the things that they needed to do? How much will it cost? This issue is it's, it's something that uh, at the end of the day, it may be just a work in progress. The reason I say that is there is need for even budgeting, to know how much is involved. These things could not have been done the way we had this, uh, the, the, the announcement being made, because there would have been some prayer cautions, as I said earlier, between all the key stakeholders, especially those who are going to be assisted. The discourse, for example, and the transmission company, because there must be a, a, a synergy in terms of uh, the transmission network itself. You are very aware that one of the biggest challenges we have today is that of transmission. The generation is there, but if we cannot move, we have stranded power over 3,000 megawatts now of stranded power. It used to be about 2,000. Now it's about 3,000 stranded electricity. And we are crying, especially the, the manufacturers. We are crying because we cannot produce our goods and make our goods competitive with the kind of electricity. All of us are self-generated. Right now, we self-generate up to 13,000 megawatts of electricity. There is no manufacturer, no serious manufacturer is there without having his own electricity supply equipment in place, like the generators. Now, talking about electricity supply now, with the timeline for the three phases of the project, how soon do you think that Nigerians can start expecting reliable power supply? I, it, 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 I, I, don't see, I don't see it happening soon. I don't see it happening soon. The reason is very simple. Electricity supply, you have to look at the whole value chain. You have to look at the gas supply, for example, to the, to the gen costs. The gen costs are complaining bitterly because they are not being paid what they are supposed to be paid. The, 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 the gas uh, producers also are complaining that, um, look, uh, we, 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 have to have, uh, we have to be paid uh, the economic price for the gas we are supplying to the gen cost. Otherwise, we will not supply. Uh, the gen cost now produce the electricity and the discourse reject, a lot of the discourse reject because they don't have a robust uh, distribution network that will take whatever is supplied to them. And they are scared that if any, any, if any electricity that they take, they must pay for. And if they must pay for that, you know, they will say, I would rather not take it because if I take, for example, 500 megawatts and uh, I am only able to give to my customers 300 megawatts, that means I have 200 megawatts that I have to pay for. Yet I haven't consumed it. Yet I haven't been paid for it. So the in electric supply chain, you must look at the whole value chain and there must be a very, very smooth uh, transition from the point of the gas uh, generation to to the electricity generation itself to the transmission company which distributes and then finally to the uh, uh, discourse. All right, and Engineer Osman, you know, when, when you look at when you look at the initiative as a whole, now tell us what do you think that uh, industrial you know uh, participants like you will benefit from the project implementation? No, the, the project implementation is very good. Uh, the initiative itself, I said earlier, is good. The only thing is the, as usual with Nigeria, is just that uh, uh, 
uh, they didn't follow the procedure properly to ensure that uh, a lot of planning goes into it. If, if the correct planning had gone into it, we will all benefit because then what would have been done is we'll look at all the uh, limitations of the discourse and Siemens then can provide the equipment and the technical know-how for those. But when I talk of providing here, I'm not expecting Siemens to just bring all their equipment from Germany. No, in that case, they are going to destroy the manufacturing industry in Nigeria because we already have uh, industries in Nigeria that are producing, for example, transformers. We have industries in Nigeria that are producing cables. We have industries in Nigeria that are producing meters. So we don't expect Siemens to bring all those things from Germany. But I'm not too sure whether these things have been captured properly in the agreement itself. So oh, because... theoretically, it's a very good program. But the, is the implementation and the way it was uh, introduced that uh, we have complaints with. Now, beyond uh, realizing 25 megawatts of power in the long run, tell us what would be the other benefits of the uh, Presidential Power Initiative for Nigerians, the local and the local economy in the medium to long term. Well, fantastic, uh, because if we're able to get that, that means uh, our electricity needs uh, will be taken. Prices of, uh, because once there's adequate electricity, that means we manufacturers, for example, will be able to produce our goods at competitive prices. Elsewhere, electricity takes only about maximum 10% of production costs. In Nigeria, sometimes our electricity consumes as much as 40% of our production costs. So we cannot be competitive. And don't forget, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is already taken off. And if it is taken off, what, what does that mean? That means we are now going to compete with other African countries, our goods and services. In particular, in terms of goods, we have to have electricity at good price so that we can be able to produce our items at competitive prices. Countries All like right. Egypt and South Africa will be competing with us. All right. All right, the chairman but of the manufacturers. That, that, sorry. Before, yeah. All right. You can just go ahead if you can make it in 30 seconds. Yeah. All I wanted to say is that uh, the initiative is very good. The only thing is that uh, quickly the government, my suggestion that the government has to ensure that we sit down. Local content must be taken care of seriously. The transfer of technology must be taken care of seriously. Nigeria Electric Regulatory Commission is not supposed to be just a toothless bulldog. It must be given its adequate powers. And if it doesn't have, then I will suggest seriously that they have to go to the National Assembly with uh, some other with request to ensure that now they are strengthened in such a way that they will be the key drivers. Don't forget, our ministries are just filled up with civil servants. Civil servants, and especially okay. in a sector which is technical, like electricity, they don't know much. Okay. So whatever decision the civil servants take in the ministry may be the wrong decisions unless okay. they liaise appropriately with all the technical areas. So I'm afraid we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to wrap up this conversation at this point, but would like to thank you, uh, Chairman of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria Power Development Company, Engineer Ibrahim Usman, for speaking with us on the program this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.